to Perception Media. I am your hostess, Sitha Sinegeek, and today I'm going to be talking about another Brat Pack classic brought to us by John Hughes, 16 Candles. Ooh, ooh, this movie did not hold up well at all. I thought Weird Science was bad. This movie was painful. <laughs> Um, so it stars Molly Ringwald, and uh, she's supposed to be celebrating her 16th birthday. Uh, the film came out in 1984, and I think Molly Ringwald actually was at the time 16, as was Anthony Michael Hall. Uh, this older boy, uh, high school senior, although he is played by a 24-year-old man, is Jake, and Sam has a crush on Jake, and that's kind of that, along with the fact that her family has forgotten her birthday, are kind of what sets the entire story. Um, who, so Sam's sister Jenny is getting married the next day and that's pretty much why her family forgot her birthday. Um, so she's having a bad day and she uh, has like I said a crush on this boy Jake and this boy man man this man Jake is dating this girl Carolyn played by I believe the 25 year old I don't know how to pronounce her name Haviland? A uh, chick from Ghostbusters 2, and they put the most atrocious blonde wig on her because John Hughes only wanted one redhead, Molly Ringwald. But I mean, that wig was real obvious though. <laughs> um, it looks so bad. I, I I do like Sam, Molly Ringwald's character in this one. She's kind of a uh, she's bitter. She's angsty. She's got she's got some tood in this one, which is a lot better than her pretty in pink and her Breakfast Club character. And then we also have, um, oh, I was playing his name, Anthony Michael Hall is in this film as well. And again, he's playing a nerd. He plays a nerd in all these movies, poor guy. He plays Farmer Ted, and that's because his name is Ted Farmer, and I guess they, a lot of teachers used to do um, attendance by last name first, then first name, and then he got labeled as Farmer Ted. I don't know, I guess that makes sense. But uh, he's kind of a little nerdy freshman, and he's constantly hitting on Molly Ringwald's character. And they do use quite a few, like, gay slurs and words that they were using um, when I was growing up in the early 2000s. And I think now have finally kind of like, I, I think now it's kind of like, okay, these words, these terms aren't appropriate to use anymore. Uh, so luckily that's out of the way. So, but it is kind of like, I've never really heard it like used in a movie. Like even when I was growing up, when kids were still using it, like I'd still never heard it in a film before. So that was kind of weird. I was, whoa, okay. All right. <laughs> Just right off the tongue right that. And there is like a conversation she has with, uh, Sam has with her best friend, um, where it seems like kind of crazy that she would, uh, they made a joke about dating a black man. And there's a lot of racism in here. I ain't even gonna get started on Long Duck Dong. Wow, what were they thinking? I mean, Breakfast at Tiffany's came out in the 60s, right? But like, for an 80s movie to just be that blatantly, like, bad. That's crazy, right? That a lot of 80s movies do that? I feel like they'd moved on to, like, Cold War stuff. I'm gonna be doing war games next, by the way. Um, but that was, I don't understand Long Duck Dong, like, at all. I feel like by the 80s they should have phased out of, like, doing that kind of stuff. But I guess not. It's just something that for, na for like, again, like, you know, t circa, like, 30 years later, that's kind of crazy that that was in this movie. Um, let's see. Uh, and so Molly Ringwald is, like, really envious of Caroline. And because she's dating Jake, and Jake is looking to not be dating Caroline anymore because he thinks she's kind of, like, boring. And he notices Sam, Molly Ringwald's character, is looking at him, and he says, It's kind of nice the way she's always looking at me. He's kind of shallow, really. He, he likes her because he knows she likes him. And uh, Haviland's character, Caroline, she's kind of, it shows her being, like, she's, like, the ideal female and, uh, so my Ringwald character and her best friend hate her just because she's very pretty. It's all very shallow, actually. And uh, there, uh, she holds a party at Jake's house, and she basically implies says that 
um, you know, I can get anybody to love me, you know, so be a good boyfriend or I'll just leave you, making her very shallow. And Sam's sister, Jenny, who's getting married the next day, is also very, very shallow. She's like, you know, I've had a lot of men love me, but never longer, you know, never for six months straight. And so she's marrying him because he's been with her for six months. Oh, God. It's, it's just all these characters are super, super shallow. It's, it's painful. And Farmer Ted, Anthony Michael Hall's character is too, but he does have this kind of fun conversation with Jake, um, uh, where Jake, I'll get to the date rape thing, um, but Jake really likes Molly Ringwald and because she likes him. And uh, so Farmer Ted puts the brakes on it and says, um, you know, if you're just looking for, for a piece of, then uh, I'll either do it or I'll find someone bigger than me to kick your... And he, Jake's reply, oof, whew, I can get a piece of any time I want. I got Caroline upstairs, passed out cold, and I can violate her ten different ways if I want to. So now we get into, like, another big issue in this film, which is, like, the date rape. Okay, I don't want to be clear that I don't think Farmer Ted, <laughs> I don't think Farmer Ted and Caroline um, were actually intimate with one another. My dog just kicked the table. Sorry. Um, I don't think they were actually intimate with one another, um, but Farmer Ted, who's a freshman, so he's probably max 14 or 15, right, drove Caroline home, and she's 18, and, uh, she's very drunk and kind of flirtatious, and, uh, he stopped at his friend's house to have them take pictures of them together so people would believe that, um, he got to drive um, I think it's a, Roy, uh, a Rolls Royce, right? And Caroline home to get popular. And, oh God, like that's just... <sighs> Taking advantage of a intoxicated woman is not all right. But again, I, I will state, I don't think they actually consummated like any type of relation, like any type of thing. Um, but it's still so disturbing and problematic. And I've read... Other people's reviews that apparently it was kind of like inappropriate back then too. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, but now it's watching it, it's like, ooh, that's creepy. But also, I mean, I think he at, he kind of stopped and got drunk as well. And also, like, underage drinking, kind of bad enough. But like, having that on top of it is just, like, the way Jake was treating his girlfriend was so bad. And at the end of the movie, they do break up. But I think the implication is that they're gonna, with the, the words they use, the implication is that they're gonna get back together, which I also find problematic. And then despite, like, Jake like and, and Sam never having any kind of, like, conversation with one another, they go off together. And I'm just thinking, they're like, girl, don't get in this older boy's car. Whew. But she does. And they have the birthday cake. And it's a very iconic scene that I believe is on the cover of the film. But it's like, man, you don't even know this boy. Get to know him before you start, like, start anything with him. Also, I don't know. That just... And, like, they're going into the relationship with, like, I want to have love. But it's all based on, like, looks and glances and the fact that you know that she's into you. And it's just, oh, man, this movie has so much wrong with it. Like, date rape, racism, slurs. Like, I will, oh, the way their treatment of, like, women as, like, because the older sister Jenny is on her period and there, there's this whole, oh my god, there's this, such a long effing thing about it. And just... John Hughes, man, you wrote The Breakfast Club and you wrote Ferris Bueller. What is it with this and Weird Science? I don't get it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I didn't like this movie. <laughs> um, and it didn't even have, like, the fun song. Like, at least Weird Science had that great Oingo Boingo song. And then, you know... Breakfast Club has a uh, uh, don't don't forget or don't don't you like and uh, Ferris Bueller just has I don't know what the name of the theme song for that is but it's also a good song it's catchy recognizable and all of his films have really nice cars and teenagers doing things they shouldn't but this one just I think it took it too far in in places that it just should not have is the issue. Um, I do like Anthony Michael Hall's character. I know he's kind of harassing Sam's character, uh, but he's cute, and I like I, li I do like the way they, the teenagers talk. I do think it's like pretty accurate. 
for better or worse, I do think that's very much how teenagers think and act, and I will say John Hughes really nailed that. Anyway, um, that's really all I had to say about this film. It didn't hold up well. Um, go watch a different John Hughes film. Go watch this John Hughes film. Go watch Ferris Bueller. Um, I'd say it's, this one's pretty acceptable to skip. Yeah. <laughs> Um, thank you so much for watching. We need a Moon Knight movie. Have a wonderful day.